the lights flicker once, twice, then everything goes dark. Your phone has 12% battery, the fridge is humming its last breath. Do you know exactly what you need to survive the next three days, three weeks, three months? In the next few minutes, you'll discover the exact power requirements for any outage scenario, from a weekend blackout to a year-long grid failure. We'll break down the real numbers behind battery storage, solar generation, and backup systems so you can stop guessing and start preparing with confidence. Welcome to Prep Pantry, where we cut through the survival noise and give you practical, tested solutions. If you're serious about being ready for whatever comes, hit that like button and subscribe because the knowledge we're sharing today could be the difference between comfort and chaos when the grid goes down. Let's start with the most common scenario you'll face, short-term outages lasting one to three days. These are your typical storm-related blackouts, accidents, or scheduled maintenance situations. Here's the truth. These outages rarely pose a direct threat to survival. Your main challenges are boredom, minor discomfort, and maintaining some sense of normalcy. So what do you actually need to power during these short outages? First, communication is critical. Your cell phone might still work if the towers aren't affected, so keeping it charged becomes your top priority. You need information, you need contact with the outside world, and you need to know when the power is coming back on. Next up is entertainment and sanity. Laptops, tablets, and e-readers can provide entertainment and education for both you and your kids. The key here is having content downloaded before the outage hits. Those streaming services won't work without internet, so stock up on downloaded books, movies, and educational content. Lighting is essential, but often overlooked. Flashlights, lanterns, and LED lights will be your best friends. You'll want to stock up on batteries, AA, AAA, C, and D cells, and seriously consider rechargeable options with a way to charge them. For heating and cooling, small USB fans or battery-powered fans can help in the heat. If you're dealing with cold weather, a propane buddy heater with one-pound canisters can keep a small room warm. Plan on two canisters per night if you're running it consistently. And here's a pro tip for refrigeration. Minimize opening the fridge door. If you need to maintain temperature for critical items, use a car inverter to power the refrigerator for short periods. A 1000 watt inverter can keep your fridge cold without draining your car battery too quickly. Now let's talk real numbers. How much power do you actually need? Surprisingly little. But to maintain comfort and sanity, here's what you should aim for. Have at least three sets of batteries for each device, one in use, two as backup. For power banks, go with a minimum of 10,000 milliamp hours per device, but more is always better. If you have a household with multiple phones and tablets, aim for several power banks. A small power station in the 250 to 500 watt hour range can provide limited AC power for essential devices. These micro power stations are perfect for short term outages and won't break the bank. Remember that propane calculation? Two canisters per night for heating, so stock up for several days. And that car inverter we mentioned? A 1000 watt model gives you flexibility without being overkill. The beautiful thing about preparing for short term outages is that it's straightforward. Build your supplies gradually. If you forget something, the power will likely return before it becomes a real problem. This is your foundation. Get this level right before you move on to more serious preparation. Now we move into the zone where things get real. Medium term outages lasting one to three weeks. This is where uncertainty grows, where you don't know when the lights are coming back on, and where most serious preppers focus their efforts. The goal shifts from mere comfort to maintaining essential functions and security. Your battery needs scale up significantly. Instead of a few backup sets, you're now looking at 50 to 100 backup batteries, and you need to rotate them regularly to ensure they're fresh and reliable. Dead batteries won't help anyone. This is where rechargeable batteries become a game changer. Invest in quality brands like Eneloop or Amazon Basics and test them in advance. Don't wait for an outage to discover your rechargeables are garbage. And remember, you need chargers and a way to charge those chargers. Solar panels, larger backup banks, or a generator. For lighting during extended outages, diversify your options. Solar yard lights can be brought inside at night. Oil lanterns and candles provide reliable light, though you need to be careful with fire safety. 
Here's a critical point. Avoid lighting up your entire house. You don't want to draw unwanted attention during an extended outage when others might be desperate. Security takes on new importance when an outage stretches beyond a few days. Motion lights and detectors, whether battery or solar powered, give you early warning of anyone approaching your property. Here's the problem with most security cameras. If they rely on Wi-Fi, they're useless when the internet goes down. Opt for low-tech in-house systems with minimal power needs. Combine motion sensors with cameras and lights for a comprehensive early warning system. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, refrigeration. A full-size refrigerator consumes one to one and a half kilowatt hours per day. That's impractical for most backup systems, especially over multiple weeks. This is where DC refrigerators shine. They're highly efficient, using only 250 to 300 watt hours per day. If you're going to invest in one major appliance for extended outages, make it a DC refrigerator for critical items like medications and essential perishables. For everything else, shift to non-perishable foods. Now we need to talk about power storage and generation for medium-term outages. You need at least 2 kilowatt hours of extra storage. This could be a combination of power banks, LIFE PO4 batteries, or larger power stations. But here's the critical piece. Storage alone won't cut it for weeks-long outages. You need a way to replenish that power. Solar panels are ideal for this. Three solar panels can generate 1,000 to 1,500 watt-hours per day in good conditions. But notice we said can. Cloudy days, winter, and suboptimal angles all reduce output. More panels increase your resilience and give you a buffer when conditions aren't perfect. Alternative generation like wind and hydro are less common but viable if you have the right location. Generators running on gas, diesel, or propane are essential backups, especially during extended cloudy periods when solar isn't producing enough. And this brings us to fuel storage. Store at least 25 gallons of fuel in 5-gallon jugs and rotate it regularly. Gasoline degrades over time, so you can't just fill containers and forget about them. Propane is incredibly versatile. It works for heating, cooking, and running generators, and it stores much longer than gasoline. The medium-term outage zone is where your preparation gets serious. You're building systems with redundancy, planning for replenishment, and thinking about security in ways you never had to during short outages. Now, let's talk about the scenario that keeps serious preppers up at night. Long-term outages lasting one month to a year or more. Whether caused by catastrophic events, cascading infrastructure failures, or worst-case scenarios like an EMP, these extended outages present challenges that test the limits of preparation. Here's the reality. At this stage, survival depends on the combination of luck and preparation. Your daily energy needs remain relatively stable. You still need to charge devices, power lights, maybe run that DC refrigerator. But the ability to consistently replenish your power becomes absolutely critical. System redundancy is non-negotiable. You need multiple layers of backup, solar, generator, fuel reserves, and battery storage. If any single component fails, you need another system to pick up the slack. This isn't about paranoia, it's about engineering reliability into your survival. Resourcefulness and adaptation become as important as your physical supplies. As supplies dwindle and systems fail, your ability to improvise and adapt determines your success. Maybe you need to repair a solar panel. Maybe you need to rig a wind turbine from spare parts. Maybe you need to find alternative fuel sources. Flexibility is survival. And here's something many lone wolf preppers don't want to hear. Community matters. Security and communication take on entirely new importance as social order may be disrupted. Working with neighbors for mutual security and resource sharing isn't weakness, it's strategic survival. No one can defend a property 24-7 alone. No one has every skill needed for long-term survival. Community multiplies your capabilities. For power strategies in long-term scenarios, think in terms of expansion and conservation. The more solar panels and storage you have, the better off you'll be. A full home solar setup is ideal, but expensive. Start with what you can afford and expand over time. Use your generator sparingly. It's not for running your TV or making coffee. It's for recharging your battery banks and powering essential devices when solar can't keep up. Every gallon of fuel is precious and irreplaceable once your stored supply runs out.
Fuel management becomes critical. Rotate your stored fuel religiously, conserve every drop, consider alternative fuels and methods, wood burning, biogas if you have the knowledge and resources, every alternative extends your primary fuel supply. Device prioritization becomes ruthless. Focus on true essentials, communication for information and coordination, refrigeration only for medicine, minimal lighting and security systems. Everything else is luxury you might not be able to afford. But here's what many preppers miss. The human element extends beyond just physical survival. Mental health becomes a serious challenge. Boredom, stress, and uncertainty can be as debilitating as physical discomfort. Plan for entertainment, education, and social interaction. Books, games, musical instruments, these aren't luxuries, they're mental health maintenance. Skill development becomes critical. Learn to use radios before you need them. Maintain your equipment regularly and know how to repair it. Adapt to changing circumstances rather than rigidly sticking to a plan that's no longer working. The most successful survivors aren't those with the most gear, they're the ones who can adapt when the gear fails. So how do you actually build a system that covers all these scenarios? Let's break it down into a practical, actionable process you can start today. Step 1 is assessing your needs. Make a list of every essential device in your home. Phones, lights, radios, medical equipment like CPAP machines or refrigerated medications. Calculate the daily power consumption for each device. You can usually find this on the device label or in the manual. Then critically evaluate which devices are truly necessary for survival versus comfort. Be honest with yourself. Your television might be nice to have, but it's not essential. Step two is building your supplies systematically. Start with batteries. Stockpile disposable batteries and invest in quality rechargeables with a charging system. Acquire multiple high-capacity power banks. Get at least one small power station for AC devices. Diversify your lighting with a mix of battery-powered, solar, and oil-based options. Set up heating and cooling solutions like propane heaters and battery-powered fans. And if you're serious about medium and long-term preparation, invest in a DC refrigerator for critical items. Step three is planning for replenishment. Start with solar panels. Even a single 100-watt panel is better than nothing, and you can expand as your budget allows. Choose a generator that's compatible with your fuel storage plan. Store and rotate gasoline, diesel, or propane based on what your generator and other equipment uses. Step 4 covers security and communication. Learn to use HAM, FRS, and GMRS radios before an emergency. Practice regularly so it becomes second nature. For security, opt for low-power cameras and sensors that don't rely on Wi-Fi or cloud services. Use motion-activated and low-profile lighting that provides security without advertising your preparedness to the whole neighborhood. Step 5 is where most people fail. Practice and adaptation. Test your systems regularly. Don't wait for a real outage to discover that your generator won't start or your solar panels aren't positioned correctly. Rotate your supplies and check for expired batteries or degraded fuel every few months. Simulate outages by intentionally turning off your breaker for a weekend and living entirely on your backup systems. You'll identify gaps in your plan real fast. Here's the thing about building a preparedness system. It can feel overwhelming if you try to do everything at once. So let's talk about practical tips that make this achievable. Start small. Build your supplies gradually over time. Even a few extra batteries or a single power bank makes a difference in a short-term outage. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars this week. Buy one thing every paycheck, and before you know it, you've built a substantial system. Rotate and maintain everything. Use your stored fuel in your vehicles and replace it with fresh fuel. Cycle through your batteries by using them in everyday devices. Check your equipment quarterly to make sure everything still works. The worst time to discover a problem is when you actually need the equipment. Stay informed about new technologies. Satellite communication systems are becoming more affordable and accessible. Battery technology improves every year. Solar panels get more efficient. What's expensive or impractical today might be affordable tomorrow. Community matters more than most preppers want to admit. Share knowledge and resources with neighbors you trust. Collective preparedness is more effective than individual preparedness. If you're the only prepared house on your block, you're not safer, you're a target. But if several families work together, you're all stronger. Adaptability might be your most important asset. Be ready to adjust your plan as circumstances change. Maybe your solar panels get damaged in the same storm that caused the outage. Maybe your generator breaks down. Maybe you need to share resources with neighbors who are struggling. Flexibility and creative problem solving matter as much as physical supplies. One more critical point. 
Know what you don't know. Don't assume you can figure out ham radio operation during a crisis. Don't assume you'll be able to repair a generator without practice. Don't assume your family will know how to use the backup systems if you're not there. Train, practice, and teach others so your preparedness isn't dependent on you alone. You now understand the three tiers of power outages and the exact requirements for each. You've got the numbers for storage, the strategy for generation, and a five-step plan to build your system the right way. Remember, preparedness isn't about paranoia, it's about peace of mind. Start with one extra power bank this week, add a solar panel next month, build gradually, test constantly, and know that you're creating real security for yourself and your family. If this video gave you clarity on your power needs, smash that like button and subscribe to Prep Pantry for more nonsense preparedness content. Drop a comment below telling us what you're adding to your system first. We read every single one. Now go take action and we'll see you in the next video.